Hi, welcome to Yoga Any Day. My name is Elizabeth Stewart. Thank you so much for joining me today. We're going to be doing some yoga in alignment with the astrology of the Leo full moon on January 28th. First, we'll take a look at the astrological chart for this full moon, and then we'll practice three yoga poses relating to three of the aspects happening at this time. We'll do a little sitting meditation, and then we'll practice some vinyasas, flowing yoga poses to link these energies together. So here's the chart. The first aspect that we're going to talk about is the full moon itself. It's in Leo, and as you can see, it's all alone on this side of the chart. It's opposed by the Sun, Jupiter, Saturn, and Mercury, all in Aquarius. It's directly opposite the Sun, as in every full moon, which is also conjunct Jupiter. This is a big energy. The Sun conjunct Jupiter is pretty big, and opposite the Moon, it's a strong energy. Because Leo is ruled by the Sun, it's also calling our attention to where the Sun is. And it's illuminating extra, with extra strength the Moon and highlighting that the Moon is full and it's a completion and culmination energy like in every full Moon. And that the Moon, which is, is representative of our feelings or our inner emotional life, is being seen and heard, which is what Leo desires. Leo is also heart-centered energy, and this full moon is asking us to have the courage to trust our hearts. Know that whatever's going on externally, if it's a storm, if it's stressful, or there are changes happening, going within and centering yourself in your heart will keep you safe and grounded. Once you go into your heart, you can express yourself, which is also Leo energy. I encourage you to check your birth chart to see which house, nine degrees of Leo, that's where the moon is, which house that falls in to see where this energy is going to show up for you personally. So for a yoga pose to express this full moon and Leo energy, we're going to be doing lion pose. We'll start sitting, and I'd like for you to come so you're sitting on top of your heels with your feet tucked under you. If that's not comfortable, you can put um, a bolster or a pillow or a rolled up towel, something like that, to elevate your butt a little bit so you're not so heavy on your heels. And if that's still not comfortable, you can sit on something and have the heels a little bit next to your butt rather than underneath you. So find your own variation where you can be sitting. Spread the knees a bit wide, not as wide as you can because we're just starting, but somewhat wider than your hips. And we're gonna lean a little bit forward and bring the hands to the ground. If you can have the hands all the way flat, that's great. If they don't reach, you can be on your fingertips. And if it's not comfortable for some reason to lean forward, you can just have your hands on your thighs. If your hands are on the ground in front of you, try to have the fingers spread really wide. Check, actually look at your hands and check to see if all of the fingers are evenly spaced open and the palm is very wide and flat on the ground. If you wanna try, you can turn the hands around so the fingers are pointing back towards you and the heel of the hand is reaching forward and down. Don't push too hard. We don't want to jam the wrists. Um, it's a big stretch, so we don't want to be putting a lot of weight onto it as well. So use your stomach, use your back to lift your weight up a bit out of your hands so you're not pushing down into the heels of the hands too much. So for lion's pose, we're going to focus on the chest. The lion is Leo and it's heart-centered, as I said, and this pose is very open in the chest, so I want you to focus your energy there. If you can even picture yourself as a lion with that big, courageous, open chest, the courageous heart, um, that would be great. So the way we're gonna do it is you're gonna inhale and let your chin fall down towards your chest. You can let the shoulders relax. And on the exhale, we're gonna roll the chest open, 
looking forward or up with your head, depending on what feels comfortable for you. Spreading the chest nice and wide and giving that good exhale. And then we'll relax again, letting the head drop down on the inhale. And exhale, opening up wide chest, looking forward or up, depending on your neck. Okay, so we're gonna add a piece here. When you open up with your chest and you look forward or up, I want you to stick your tongue all the way out. So it's like a tongue stretch. Sometimes in yoga we stretch funny body parts that we don't think of as needing to stretch. This is one of those. We're stretching our tongue. So stretch it from the back all the way out of your mouth. And if you feel comfortable, you can either make a noise. It can be like a roar of a lion. So it could be something very throaty or if you don't want to actually make noise or if you feel like you try it but it's straining your throat, you can just make a breath sound so it doesn't have to be vocalized. So let's try that a couple of times. Inhaling, letting your head drop down, let the shoulders relax. Exhale, opening up in the chest, feel your throat really open and make some sound or at least just give a long <sighs> exhale. And we'll come back down with the head, relaxing the shoulders on the inhale. Exhale, opening up, big chest, reaching up and forward. Inhale, down again. Exhale, opening up. Don't be shy to make some sound. And if you want, you can look the eyes up between the eyebrows so you're focusing on your third eye. Keep going a few more times, find your own pace. Don't feel like you have to go quickly at all. Really enjoy that, that big stretching, squeezing open and that lion-hearted chest, very courageous, up and forward. And gently sitting back, taking the hands off of the floor or lifting them off of your thighs. And we're just gonna rotate the wrists a few times, making slow circles, stretching them around. Just releasing any tension that might have built up in the wrists. And then let's rest the hands on the thighs and just stretch your head a little bit side to side, pushing your shoulder down as you reach your head away. Lifting your head up and over, other side, and then reaching that opposite shoulder down as you reach your head away. And we'll do it again, up and over, shoulder down as the head reaches forward, I'm sorry, sideways. And lifting back up, and one more head over, and the opposite shoulder reaching down and coming back up. And we'll take a look at the chart again for our next aspect. So as you can see here, all these red lines, it's what we call a T-square. The Sun, which as I mentioned is conjunct Jupiter, it's in Aquarius, is opposite the Moon in Leo, and the Moon and the Sun in Jupiter are squaring Uranus and Mars in Taurus. Uranus and Mars are not exactly conjunct. They're just coming out of their exact conjunction, but they're still close together and they're both picking up on those squares. These three signs, Aquarius, Leo, and Taurus, are all fixed signs. So this is a pretty intense square energy in the fixed signs. It's very, um, I don't want to say stuck because I don't want to make it sound bad, but it's intense and it's, it's a heavy contraction of energy. It's a real,
The next aspect that we're going to look at is a T-square. You can see all of these red lines happening in this chart and it looks, makes a big triangle shape. It's called a T-square. We've got the Sun conjunct Jupiter in Aquarius, as I mentioned, opposite the Moon in Leo, and they're all squaring Uranus and Mars in Taurus. Uranus and Mars are just coming out of their exact conjunction, but they're still quite close, and they're both picking up on these squares. These three signs that these planets are in, Aquarius, Leo, and Taurus, are all fixed signs. So this square energy happening in three fixed signs is pretty intense. It can be very frustrated, especially with Mars in the mix. And fixed signs don't like change. And we've got Uranus here right in the middle, which is the one who brings the sudden change. So this may be showing up for you in the sense of certain things may want to change quickly and there's a lot of resistance to that. Or you may not want to change and something else is coming in suddenly, basically that you don't want to go along with. You don't like that change. Or something is coming up that's been repressed that you didn't realize and it's not exactly a happy realization. So these are different ways that this energy could manifest. Because these are fixed signs, we can focus on the positive side of fixed signs, which is persistence, being able to go slowly, and not giving up. So as we may be feeling some frustration, as we may be dealing with things that are arising suddenly that we might not know how to integrate, we can try to use the best of this fixed sign energy by really taking our time, allowing ourselves to go slowly enough that we can be in the moment and not get swept away by frustration or anger or surprise. So for a yoga pose to incorporate this energy, we're going to practice crow, which is an arm balancing pose. A lot of people, I find, um, can get frustrated with crow because they can't lift their feet off the ground. It's like, I can't do crow, right? But you can. It doesn't matter if your feet are on the ground. I know that sounds like, well, yeah, it does matter. No, it doesn't matter. Because once your feet off of, are off of the ground, you're going to be heading towards some other piece of the pose. There's always something new to discover. So if you've got both feet on the ground and, you're, and you, there's no way they're coming off, don't worry, that's crow. First time I tried crow, I couldn't get it, my feet off of the ground. It took a while for me to learn how to do it. So you're in the process already. We're going to go nice and slowly and we'll start by warming up the wrists a little bit more, circling them. We'll interlace the fingers and press them straight down stretching the fingers and then turning them around the other way. This is a position I like to do a lot. You're trying to reach the heels of the hands forward and peel the thumbs back towards you with your shoulders down and your chest open. And we'll go a couple of times in each direction. Straight down and turning them around, reaching the heels of the hands away from you and the thumbs back towards you with the shoulders down and open. And you can let your head slide around a little bit, wiggle your shoulders a little bit, and we're gonna try our crow. So bringing the palms to the ground, Again, looking down at your hands and checking to make sure you have space between each of your fingers. The palms are nice and wide, spread flat into the ground. And there are a couple of different ways that you can try to balance your knees on your arms. The easiest way, the way that I figured out worked for me when I was first learning, was to have the knees pretty wide apart. So you can use that sort of wide area on the inner knee or the inner thigh just above the knee to try to rest on your bent elbow. Make sure your elbows are bent because that creates a little shelf 
for you to rest the legs on. So if you, you, if you want to try that variation with the knees pretty wide open, go for it. You may feel a big inner thigh stretch, that's okay. Who's to say that crow isn't an inner thigh stretch? Not me. If that's what you're feeling, that's fine. Basically what we're trying to do is slowly transfer the weight from the feet to the hands and we're using the knees balancing on the upper arm to do that. So another place that you can try to put your legs would be a bit higher towards your armpit and more with the shin side of the knee, finding a spot to rest on on the backs of the arms. If you try this for a little bit and then you wanna come out of it and stretch your wrists again, roll your head around, release tension, going slowly, being persistent and not giving up also means taking breaks. We can't just keep going through the tension like bulldozers. We have to pay attention to what we're actually feeling. And if you need a rest, have a rest, right? Take some deep breaths, stay calm. That's actually what we're practicing with Crow Pose today is the persistence and staying calm when you're feeling frustrated or things are coming up that you don't necessarily like. So the last way that I'll show you that you can try balancing your legs on your arms is along the arm. So it's almost like the shin and the upper arm are aligned with each other. That's pretty tricky, but you can try that too. Once you feel like you have a fair amount of weight in your hands, do me a favor and don't push off of your feet because you're gonna launch yourself forward and your face is just heading towards the floor. There's nothing to stop it unless you roll to the side, which if you do feel like you're falling forward, definitely roll to the side. But I don't want you to have momentum that's sending you face first into the floor. So how are we gonna lift off? Point the toes on one foot point the foot and then bring it back down. Point the other foot and then bring it back down. So that's the first step towards getting one foot at a time off of the ground. Then if you want to try both, you point one foot and then you see if you can lighten how much weight you have on the foot that's still on the ground. We're not going to just try lifting it off all of a sudden. We're gonna see if we can slowly transfer the weight out of that foot. Only when you feel like you don't have weight in that foot, then you can point that foot as well, lifting the toes off of the ground. So it's a very smooth transition. As I said, we're not using momentum, we're not launching ourselves. Sometimes if we rush, then we get booted out of a pose or we get frustrated and we don't like it and we give up. Slow and steady wins the race, especially when there's a T-square in fixed signs. Okay, when you've had enough, we're gonna come easily back off of the hand sitting and we'll give one more wrist stretch here, being very nice to our wrists today. You can pull the hand down one way, turn it around and pull it back the other way, and do the same on the other arm, pulling the hand down one way, turning it around and pulling it back the other way. And we'll come back to the chart again to look at our last aspect. So as you can see in Capricorn here, we have Venus and Pluto exactly conjunct. They are both at 25 degrees of Capricorn. And again, you might wanna check your birth chart to see which house 25 degrees of Capricorn falls in for you to see where this energy might be showing up more specifically. So Pluto, brings death and then rebirth. Pluto maybe focuses more on the destruction, but the destruction or the death allows space for the rebirth or the new structure to emerge. 
So there's some kind of deconstruction happening here with Venus. And because Pluto is the stronger planet, the outer planet having a stronger influence, Venus is going to be permanently changed through her interaction with Pluto. Venus represents our desires, our relationships with ourselves and with others, and our sense of values and self-worth. So some kind of deep, permanent transformation is happening here around self-worth, around sense of self in relationship, it could show up through finances because Venus also has to do with money or desire. What do you want or what do you not want? So when Pluto comes along, it's impossible to predict how it's going to influence us exactly, right? We're not um, looking at the chart here and saying, oh yeah, this is going to happen to you on Tuesday. No, we don't know what's going to happen, but there is a theme. That's basically what I get out of astrology is, okay, there's a theme here. And then you can see how it applies to you directly. Something will be happening in this Venus-Pluto conjunction in Capricorn that's a big transformation and restructuring of our Venus. The yoga pose that we're going to do to incorporate this energy is cow face pose. So we're going to start sitting. If it's comfortable for you to cross one leg over the other leg, having both knees bent and your feet by your sides, that's the traditional way to do this pose. If that feels horrible, you can just straighten the bottom leg out. So you have one leg straight and the other leg bent on top. Try to tuck the top knee around over to the side as much as you can so that it ends up in your center. If you have both legs tucked in, right, both knees bent, feel that conjunction between the two legs. Feel the points of contact between the two legs. And you can squeeze them together a little bit to just give some pressure to feel that connection. And then Whichever leg is on top, okay, you're going to take the opposite arm and reach the elbow up towards the ceiling with the hand down towards your upper back. So we'll start by just stretching it. You can take your other hand and just give that elbow a gentle pull. Try to feel a stretch in the tricep, in the back of your upper arm. Don't let your head get sent too far forward and down. You want to try to lift up with your head and you can even use the back of your head to push into that arm to help stretch it a little bit. Then we're going to drop the hand that's holding the elbow. We're going to drop it all the way down to the floor. Now, if you can, bend that bottom arm and join your hands behind your back. That's cow face pose. If that's not, definitely not happening, you can use a belt or a strap to uh, hold one side in each hand and use that as a point of contact between the hands. Or if you don't want to do that, you can just put the bottom hand on the ground. You can use it for support to help your back stay pretty straight. Wherever you're at in this pose, take nice long breaths into your chest, into that stretching upper arm, and give a little pressure between the legs. Breathe deeply into the pelvis. So we're grounded here. This is this Venus-Pluto conjunction is happening in Capricorn, which is grounded. I want to focus on that deep grounding energy and the conjunction of the two planets can be felt in a little bit of squeeze and pressure between the legs. It's pretty intense, it's pretty deep. Take your time, breathe slowly, softening in your face, allowing whatever you're feeling to come up.
and we'll gently undo the arms and undo the legs and just give yourself a little wiggle shaking it out before we do the other side. Sometimes these interactions with Pluto can feel like a test. I want you to really rise to the challenge in this pose where for me it's highlighting this issue of self-worth, right? Valuing yourself. So there's a dignity and Capricorn is about maturity. So there's a dignity and maturity in this. So let's go ahead to the other side, bringing the opposite leg on top now, either tucking the bottom leg around so the foot is by your side, or just having it straight out. Either way, try to bring that top knee towards your center and give a little pressure or squeeze between the legs, feeling that pressure of the conjunction of these planets breathing into the pelvis, feeling grounded, allowing the energy to be powerful, low down in your body. And we'll bring the opposite arm all the way up with the elbow bent, the hand dropping back towards your upper back, and take your other hand and just give a gentle stretch to that top arm, trying to feel it in the back of the top arm, a nice easy stretch happening there. Again, you can use the back of your head to reach back into the arm a little bit to help the stretch and to stay nice and tall. Breathe long, nice open chest. And then we can let go of the elbow with that hand, either bringing the hand down to the ground behind you or bending the elbow, tucking the hand up, trying to touch the hands behind your back, or holding a strap between the two hands. Still feeling that gentle squeeze and pressure in the lower body, breathe deep into the pelvis. We're growing up from this experience. Lifting gently, tall through the torso. Keep that head nice and upright, pressing it gently back into the top arm. Long, easy breaths. And slowly coming out of it, undoing the arms, undoing the legs. And we'll just stretch the legs out. And again, just give yourself a little slide around, loosening in your neck. And we're gonna come into a comfortable seated position. Whatever seated position is comfortable for you is fine. And we'll have a little meditation here. Just take a, a moment to get comfortable. Try to be tall through your spine, lifting up from the pelvis, growing up through the lower back, the middle back, the upper back, the neck, and the head, very lifted, balancing easily on top. Noticing where the breath goes. And I'd like to bring both hands flat with the palms, one on top of the other, right over your chest. See if you can feel your heartbeat inside your body and also with the hand that's touching your chest.
Letting everything else go out of your awareness, bringing your awareness fully into the beating of the heart. Listening to the heartbeat. Listening with your feelings. Listening with your hands. Listening with your inner ear. Even listening through your intuition. Allowing yourself to rest fully in your awareness inside your heart and allowing your heart to grow. Allowing it to grow even bigger Picturing the heart growing so big that it fills the chest, fills the rib cage, growing even bigger, as high as your head, as low as your pelvis. Picturing yourself inside your heart. Your heart is bigger than your body. Sitting in your heart like a king or a queen sits on a throne. Breathing gently and long through your whole body, your entire body is breathing in as one, breathing out as one, breathing in in the whole body, breathing out through the whole body. Gently letting the hands come down and letting the eyes open. Okay, I feel like we're thoroughly centered in our hearts now. We're going to do some uh, vinyasas starting with a seated series. So you can stretch the legs straight forward Sit up nice and tall, arms reach straight out to the sides with the fingers spread very wide with the palms facing up. This is our full moon in Leo pose. The chest is open. We're receiving the light of the sun with these open palms. And then we're going to reach forward with the arms and lean forward with the torso, keeping the chest open, shoulders down, don't let them scrunch up around your ears, squeezing the legs, pushing the pelvis back, tipping the sit bones back behind you, big long spine, arms reaching forward, this is our T-square in the fixed signs. 
reaching back up towards the ceiling now and then blossoming out to the sides back into our full moon position and then arching back the hands can come back behind you either with the palms flat on the ground the fingers pointing back or the fingertips on the ground arching opening up through the chest you can let your head fall all the way back if you want to this is our venus pluto conjunction we're being transformed through this arching backwards squeeze the legs together again that grounded pressure of the conjunction lifting back up the arms come out to the sides again back into our full moon pose and we're going to try flowing very steadily with the breath if my pace is not good for you or you don't want to link the breath with the movement go your own way it's just a suggestion we're going to try inhale as we move reaching forward into our t-square pose exhale once we're there inhale opening up the arms out to the sides exhale in our full moon pose inhale arching back venus pluto conjunction squeezing the legs exhale into that pose inhale moving into our moon pose exhale once you're there spread those fingers inhale sliding forward reaching the hands forward our t-square pose exhale in the pose moving in through it inhale back into the moon fingers spread wide exhale once you're there really opening through the chest inhale arching back squeeze the legs together exhale fully expressing yourself in that pose Keep going, inhaling as you're moving from one pose to the next, exhaling once you've landed in that pose, fully expressing yourself in that position on the exhale. Keep a very steady pace, fully opening, listening to yourself, and we're still inside the heart. Every position we do, the heart is even bigger than the body. We're contained inside our hearts. and gently letting that go and we're going to come up to standing take your time you can hang over and roll up slowly allowing your head to come up last and we're going to have another vinyasa here with three poses that represent our three aspects the first pose is chair pose and this is representing our Leo full moon. Sitting back and down with your butt, squeezing the legs together. Try to keep the knees over the heels rather than over the center of your foot. So you're, you're really kind of tipping back almost. Big open chest, arms up along the ears, if that's kind of pinching in the shoulders or not comfortable, you can open the arms a little bit to the sides or lower them a little bit in front of you. If it feels okay, try to have the arms very straight and right alongside your ears. Breathing big into the chest, expressing yourself through those arms. You can spread the fingers wide if you want. And then we're going to fold forward from here into a forward bend, 
straightening the legs, coming all the way down towards the ground and in towards the legs with your torso. This is our Venus Pluto grounded in Capricorn conjunction. Feel the feet, squeeze the legs and allow that transformation to happen through your head coming down with your pelvis up and the vulnerability of the stretch in the backs of your legs. Breathe long and easy, squeezing the legs together, feeling that pressure of the conjunction, allowing the head to really bow down. And we'll come back through the chair pose, sitting your butt back and down, opening up in the chest, reaching through the arms. And then we'll step one foot straight back and turn to the side with the arms out, getting ready for triangle pose. Reaching the front hand forward and down, lifting the back hand up for triangle. This is our T-square pose. We've got the two legs, one forward, to me that's the Aquarius energy pointing forward, one back, to me that's the Taurus energy pulling us to go slowly and grounding us. And the top arm is our Leo moon receiving the light of the sun. You can spread those fingers wide again if you want. Breathe long, really stretching through that top arm. Looking up if your balance feels okay or looking wherever you want to look if your balance feels better that way, that's fine. And lifting back upright and stepping the back foot up. We're gonna come back into chair pose. And then we'll step the other foot back, turn to the side, the arms out, reaching the front hand forward and down and the back arm up, finding our triangle on the other side. T-square energy, the front foot pushing forward, not exactly pushing forward, but it's squeezing and it's pointing forward. It probably wishes it could bend that back leg pulling us back, grounding us back, and the top arm expressing itself openly, radiating up from the heart, catching the light of the sun with that big open palm, and the fingers spread wide for this one. Lifting your torso all the way upright again, stepping the back foot up, to meet the front and coming back into our chair pose. So we're gonna try flowing between these poses. Again, if my pace is too quick or slow, find your own pace, but try to be slow and steady. Keep the focus on that heart energy. We're gonna inhale and exhale in chair. Then we're gonna inhale as we come into our forward bend. Exhale down in that forward bend. Inhale, back up into chair. Exhale, in chair still, opening all the way. Inhale, step one foot back. Exhale, open out to the side. Inhale, slide the hand, the front hand forward and down and the back hand up for triangle. Exhale, in triangle. Inhale, bring the arms and the chest all the way back upright. Exhale, back into chair. Inhale and exhale in chair. Inhale down into the forward bend. Exhale once you're there. Inhale back up into chair. Exhale once you're there. Inhale, step the other foot back. Exhale, open to the side, arms out. Inhale, slide that front hand forward and then down and the back hand up for triangle. Exhale, in triangle. Inhale, lifting back up. And exhaling back into chair. I'll talk you through it one more time. Inhale and exhale in chair. 
Inhale into the forward bend. Exhale while you're there. Inhale into chair. Exhale holding the chair. Inhale, step one foot back. Exhale, open to the side, arms out. Inhale, reach down into triangle. Exhale, expressing yourself fully in triangle. Inhale, lifting up and exhaling back into chair. Keep going, keep the breath flowing. It's a little complicated with the breath, so if it doesn't match my pattern, that's totally fine. Just keep going. A variation I'll offer in case you want is revolved triangle. That'll work here just as well. Getting ready to end this vinyasa cycle. When you've reached the end of your pattern, take your time coming all the way down onto the ground. We're actually gonna come all the way lying on our backs. And we can just take a moment here, kind of waiting for everybody to catch up. Let's have both feet flat on the ground and a nice tuck in the pelvis using the stomach to ground the lower back into the mat. Long, easy breaths, releasing tension. And we'll just take a minute to place the hands over the chest again Feeling the heartbeat. Maybe it's beating a bit faster now. Allowing all the other awarenesses, all the other sensations to drop into the background, focusing in on that heartbeat again. And gently letting the hands come down by your sides with the palms facing up. We're going to bring the soles of the feet together with the knees falling open and keep tucking the pelvis as we just were. So using the stomach to push the lower back down into the ground. This is our Venus conjunct Pluto in Capricorn pose, bound angle on the floor. Pressure between the feet, pressure of the lower back down into the ground is that pressure conjunction that's asking for transformation deep from below, deep from the pelvis. 
spreading the knees open away from each other and down towards the ground. It's a true opening out and down. And then we're going to close the legs, bringing the feet flat, both knees bent, lifting up through the pelvis for bridge. Palms facing up still, fingers spread wide, big rising open chest. Here's our Leo full moon, not shy, expressing itself fully, letting the chest really expand here using a little pressure into the ground with the backs of the arms to help the sternum really rise and open. And then for our T-square energy, we're gonna raise the arms along the ground all the way up uh, over your head and straighten one leg down along the ground, keeping your butt up in the air. Reach strong through the bottom leg, reach strong through the bent leg, and reach long through the arms. Spread the fingers wide again, expressing yourself through the hands like the moon receiving the light of the sun completely. And then we'll slide the arms back down along the ground as we bend the straight leg. And we'll go back up, straightening the opposite leg, arms reaching along the ground all the way up over your head. Stretch down through that straight leg. Reach up through those straight arms and a little kick into the ground with the bent leg. And bending the knee as the arms come around and down again. Back into our full moon bridge. Palms facing up still, a little pressure into the ground with the backs of the arms. And then dropping the hips all the way back down to the ground. Letting the knees fall open to the sides with the heels touching, the soles of the feet touching. Tucking in the pelvis, pressing that lower back down. And I'm gonna try to flow with the breath again. Follow me if you want, follow yourself if you prefer. We're gonna inhale and exhale in our Venus pose. We're gonna inhale as we bring the feet flat, the knees up and we come up into bridge. Exhale in our full moon bridge pose here. Inhale as you straighten one leg out and reach the arms up over your head. Exhale, reaching long while you're there. Inhale, bending that knee again. The arms swoop back down along the ground. Exhale, in our full moon bridge pose. Inhale, the other leg goes straight. The arms slide up over the head. Exhale, while you're there. Inhale, bringing the hands back down by your sides as you bend the knee. And exhaling as you drop the hips down and the knees open into our Venus pose. Inhale and exhale here, tucking the pelvis. Inhale back up into our full moon bridge. Exhale while you're there, big open chest. Inhale, one leg straight, arms over your head. Exhale, lengthening, squeezing here. Inhale back into our full moon bridge, arms by your sides. Exhale while you're there. Inhale, the other leg straightens as the arms go up over your head. Exhale, lengthening, squeezing while you're there. Inhale, back into our bridge. And exhale, down into our Venus. Inhale, and exhale, tucking the pelvis. One more, I'll guide you. Inhale into bridge. Exhale while you're there. Inhale, one leg straighten, the arms go over your head. Exhale while you're there. 
Inhale back into the bridge. Exhale while you're there. Other leg, straight inhale, arms over your head. Exhale, holding it long. Inhale back into the bridge. Exhale, lowering down into the Venus. Inhale and exhale while you're there, tucking the pelvis. And let's go one more round, following your own rhythm or continuing the breathing pattern that I just walked you through. And when we've reached the end of that whole cycle, bringing the knees into your chest, wrapping the arms around the legs and just giving yourself a little hug. You can rock a bit side to side if you want or just have a moment of stillness. And to come back up to sitting, we'll roll all the way onto one side with both knees bent, a little fetal position. Use the hands to press into the ground to walk your chest up, head coming up last, and coming around into whatever sitting position you prefer. Thank you all so much for being with me today. I loved our heart-centered Leo practice, and I hope you did too. If you'd like to learn more about me and what I offer, you can email me at yogaanyday at gmail.com. I teach private classes live online, one-on-one, -on -one, and I make personalized videos of any length that you might want. Thank you again so much. Take care. Be well.